Hello everybody, Perez Hilton here. Yeah, and I was trending on Twitter today because of that dancing video that I made a couple of days ago. How do I get this to turn off? Yeah! <laughs> Um, I love how Twitter works. The day of, even the next day, nothing, or some response, but mainly from my followers. Now, that dancing video that I made to Legs from RuPaul's Drag Race has taken off, and 95% of everybody retweeting my dancing video is telling me that I'm the F word, that I'm fat, that I'm ugly, that I'm turning them straight, and I love it! I like their comments, I retweet them, I genuinely get excited when I see people sharing and saying awful things because I truly don't care because I am being me with a smile on my face and not letting that affect my reality. People saying, I'm a bad dad, I'm doing drugs. No, 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 no. I am just dancing and healing myself and getting attention. And you, because you're watching this, are most likely a follower of mine. You know I love attention, genuinely. Negative or positive? The positive means more to me. The negative means, well, I would be lying to say that the negative means nothing, but I let the negative brush off me. And also, the majority of the negative comments on my dance video were from other gay men. I have long ago let that sip sh ship sail, that sip shail, that ship sail. And I know, I've spoken about this on my podcast. Y'all tweet Booker this video. I have spoken about it on my podcast and repeatedly. Most gay men do not like me. I'm okay with that. I mean, where did I shake my hand? Maybe um, body language says I'm not okay with it, but I am okay with it. I mean, that, does that hurt? It doesn't hurt. It sucks, but it doesn't hurt. And that, I'm being honest. It sucks, but I'm not gonna change me to, I'm not gonna pretend to be something I'm not. Me doing that dance video was me. And I'm happy with me. And I love my life. And if you're watching this video, even if you're a hater, thank you for the view. Oh gosh. I gotta move. How do I turn her off? Oh, thank God. <laughs> Anyways, if you are a gay and you're watching this, whether you like me or not, Please, I ask you, delete Grinder from your phone. I stopped using that five, six years ago, and I'm not even checking the dating sites anymore, but Grinder specifically, if you don't know this, please, if you're a woman who also has gay friends, let them know this. This is important. I just found out this because I've clearly been living under a gay rock. Grinder was sold by their gay founder and is now owned by a Chinese conglomerate. And the president of Grinder is homophobic. The president of Grinder, this gay app that is mainly used for hooking up, was quoted on Facebook in his personal Facebook page as saying that he does not believe in same-sex marriage. Sashay away. <laughs> Anyways, some people are so easily triggered. And I love it because you know what I love to do, stir the pot. I'm hearkening back to just that Scott Disick photo the other day or asking if Demi Lovato should be drinking from a champagne bottle, non-alcoholic beverages. 15 years later, your boy is still here. <laughs> what did I eat? I don't know. Anyways, let me hydrate. Because <laughs> I'm on one today. Um, a lot of people were upset 
that I posed the question. Do you think Chris Pratt and his fiance have done it? If you know what I mean. And I said that because he's very religious and I was curious. And frankly, I don't think that was offensive, inappropriate, a low blow. That is a question that I think the ladies of the talk or the real would discuss around the table. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Let me know. <sighs> All right. On to, um, I wouldn't even say it's sad. You know, one of the things that I've seen in my 15 years working in entertainment is things keep changing and evolving and YouTube is dying in one aspect and changing in another. I've observed this for a while now, but creators, for the most part, have been pushed down by YouTube and brands and TV shows that post on the platform are, are a lot more promoted or just it's what it's supposed it's mainly about almost, I would say. Uh, for the masses, young people, probably not the majority of my audience. Teenagers will still seek out those creators they enjoy watching on YouTube. But the mainstream, they'll just go watch a clip from Carpool Karaoke or Ellen or Lip Sync Battle or whatever it may be. <clears throat> well, YouTube has just made a change that is going to directly affect and negatively impact, if not force a bunch of prank channels to reinvent or become extinct. YouTube, in the wake of the Bird Box Challenge and that Paul brother, I don't even remember which one, um, who posted a Bird Box Challenge video and YouTube yanked it down, they basically have now changed their policy, YouTube, letting their creators know that any dangerous stunts or pranks that could entice or encourage others to do the same are no longer allowed. And I don't follow prank content, but there are so many prankster YouTubers on there. There's prankster dads and moms, prankster couples, pranks, 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 pranks. And you know, that kind of content does well on YouTube, but this is gonna severely impact those people because there may be some trolls out there, and I could care less. Do you, what else? But there may be some people out there who are jealous of people with a lot of followers on YouTube or whatnot and may start flagging videos as inappropriate. And a lot of prankster videos may be now starting to get flagged and removed. You know, that's stupid. I think YouTube should make those videos just for 18 and over and let them be on YouTube is my thought. Also, I noticed that Instagram made a change to their algorithm recently. If by any chance anybody with a large Instagram following is watching, have you noticed? Like, I used to get on both of my main accounts, The Perez Hilton and Perez Hilton, a ton of traffic to my content from the Explore page. No more. That has dwindled to almost nothing now. So clearly, Instagram has changed something. And thank you, God, that I don't depend on Instagram for my living. Thankfully, your boy is a hustler and I do everything. Whew. Anyways, also, I've really been slaying the cameo game. Shameless plug here. If you want a personalized video greeting from me, I give my 110% for every video. For just $27.27, you can get one too on the Cameo app or directly at cameo.com slash Perez Hilton. All right, from that YouTube drama to some more drama, a jajay. Mariah Carey is suing her personal assistant over blackmailed videos. The assistant, according to court documents, took intimate video of Mariah. And the lawsuit claims that Mariah fired this assistant whom was making a salary of $300,000 plus a year. And after the assistant was fired, she demanded 
money or threatened to do something with these videos. Well, I have some exclusive information for you all. A lot of lambs don't like me, but I know some very well-placed folk in Mariah's world. And sources tell me that those intimate videos that the assistant took of Mariah allegedly were of Carrie during manic episodes. And Mariah has previously spoken out about her very serious mental health issues. If you missed that, uh, I don't want to misquote. I think she said she was bipolar or, ma uh, or manic, or they might be the same thing. I don't... Uh, I don't want to be incorrect. That's why I just said mental health issues, but it is something more than just anxiety or depression. Although depression is debilitating and kills people. Um, as a result of Mariah suing her assistant, the assistant countersued, making all sorts of mind blowing allegations. The assistant is alleging Racism and physical abuse, not just from Mariah, but also from Mariah's former manager, Stella, whom Mariah also fired. And then as a result of that lawsuit, which claimed that the assistant was called the N-word, the assistant in the lawsuit claims that she was urinated on? Are you serious? It's so wild. I don't know what to believe. Anyways... Mariah's legal team calls the ex-assistant, quote, trash and an extortionist. Wow. Wow. I wish I almost had my podcast five days a week. Not really, but twice. I would do it if the money was there. It's not there yet. So if you listen to the podcast, help us grow it. I'm shameless. <laughs> Leave a good review, tell our friends, all that jazz. All right, an update on Rob Kardashian and Black China earlier this week. I told you all how he's been hanging out with this love and hip hop star, Alexis Sky, the same reality star who just a few days earlier got into a fight with Black China at a club. Well, Black China and Rob Kardashian's legal drama is ongoing. And the very latest sol solve volley play from Black China's lawyers, they allege that Rob Kardashian likes being scratched. Therefore, it was okay for her to attack him. That he likes when his women are rough with him. That reach. I don't know. <laughs> that reach. <laughs> Just because Rob Kardashian likes kinky, intimate time doesn't mean that he wants to be beaten up when it's not intimate time. Okay? In other news, that's... Louis C.K. is back doing stand-up and his latest show in San Jose was a scene. People got into a fight there. Protesters were outside. He literally said the following. I like to blank and I don't like being alone. What ups? You know what? He was able to get an audience and some people enjoy him and what ups? In other news, an update on the Super Bowl, it was leaked. I got to trim my nails, I just noticed. They're not too bad, but I think, you know, I like to have them nicely groomed. Um, Travis Scott put it out there, his team did, that he had consulted uh, Colin Kaepernick before agreeing to do the Super Bowl. Well, Team Kaepernick wants to let it be known that Colin did not approve of this, did not give his blessing. In fact, the opposite happened. And it was just announced that Gladys Knight is going to be performing the national anthem. 
And I saw on her Instagram, a lot of people were telling her not to do it. Some R. Kelly updates as well. While well, everything legally with the claims from former women allegedly held captive, police showed up at R. Kelly's studio and there may be charges brought against him for various other reasons. One is that he has allegedly been using his recording studio in Chicago as a place to live, which is illegal, or that people have been living there. You're not allowed to do that. According to what I have read, it's not allowed for residential use. And also, he apparently owes almost $200,000 in back rent. Also, meanwhile, in New York City, outside of R. Kelly's label, a bunch of protesters gathered urging R. Kelly's label, Sony Music, to drop him from the label. That would be something I talked about that on the podcast this week, and I posted the clip earlier today. I do think his label should drop him, but I don't think Spotify or Apple Music should drop his music. Even criminals should be able to upload music onto streaming platforms, I think, but they should definitely remove him from playlists, is what I think. All right, on to more music-related news. From R. Kelly to Michael Jackson, who's also had a bunch of allegations against him, Michael Jackson seems to be in the headlines a lot lately because of that upcoming documentary. Well, in a new interview, a podcast that he was a guest on, Macaulay Culkin, who was an, a close, I was going to say intimate, a close friend of Michael Jackson, says that his relationship with MJ was normal. I've spoken about this before when discussing Drake's relationship with Millie Bobby Brown. That ain't normal. <laughs> that ain't normal. That was not normal what I just did either. Somebody should take a screen grab of it and try to use it against me. Because I don't care. Um... All right, on to other news, from music news to some film news. The Disney Empire, Disney Studios specifically, is going to be doing yet another live-action remake of one of their animated films, this time The Hunchback of Notre Dame, which may be their least successful. I have zero desire to see that. I don't even know if I, if I know any of the music from that movie. Oh, well, but the same folks that did the music will be working on the live action reboot or remake. And Josh Gad, who was in Beauty and the Beast, is supposedly going to be playing the Hunchback. On to some TV news. Jackass alum Steve O shared a really what I think is inspiring story of his past use of illegal substances and talking about even being so low that at one point he snorted something off a table with a blood residue and his dealer was HIV positive. I'll put the link down below to that, as well as everything I already talked about so you can read, see, and hear more. This story is definitely worth checking out. I really think it can save lives and is inspiring. Thankfully, Steve-O has been sober now for over 10 years. Speaking of... Sobriety, Heather Locklear has, I think, taken some very positive steps towards her sobriety. She has dumped her boyfriend, whom it was a toxic relationship. And also she has entered an outpatient program in her house. So good on her. In other news, more positive news, some relationship news. Bachelor alum Caitlin Bristow is dating another Bachelor alum, Jason Tartik, and they just secured more money for them for a while because they need to date somebody else that's also known. You can't date a normal person. <laughs> also, more couples news. Um, Chris Pratt, whom I spoke about earlier, and Katherine Schwarzenegger are said to be already planning their wedding and they're looking to get married this summer. 
I was incorrect in assuming they were gonna have like a year long engagement. Nope, getting married this summer and possibly somewhere on the East Coast. Speaking of weddings, Justin Bieber and Haley Bieber uh, are planning their wedding and I mentioned earlier that it was gonna be soon. New information actually claims instead of late February, it's gonna be early March and somewhere on the West Coast. We don't know where yet. Speaking of weddings, I mentioned also Demi Lovato was uh, a bridesmaid at one of her dear friend's weddings. Well, she did not take part in that 10 year challenge, Demi. And she made sure to let everybody know that. She said on Instagram story, too busy living in the moment to do the 10 year challenge, but not too busy living in the moment to not post that. <laughs> On to some baby news. According to reports, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry do not know the gender of their baby. And I've noticed something. All of the wild stories of Meghan Markle and her family have stayed in 2018 for the most part. 2019 is all about Meghan Markle versus Kate Middleton. That's how the media works. <laughs> Also, Miley Cyrus wants everybody to know she is not pregnant, contrary to reports that she and Liam Hemsworth were expecting their first child. And finally, speaking of Miley, the link will be down below. You got to check her out performing at this Chris Cornell tribute. I loved hearing Miley doing some rock songs. I would love to hear some Imagine Dragons type of material from her in her next album. And I say Imagine Dragons because I want Miley to get played on the radio. If she goes traditional rock, that's not gonna happen. And that's it. <laughs> we thank you for watching. I truly thank you, truly thank you for being so supportive. You are what matters. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment, follow, subscribe, share, you know the drill.